الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وبعد so back to the seerah of nabiyyina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i think today uh, what we'll do is uh, go through um, uh, at a faster pace please uh, <coughs> going through the details is very important because allows us to uh, like we said earlier review the names and and see some of the small stories but uh, we'll do that but uh, we'll go through certain things inshallah so we finish with uh uh the first migration to al Hadasha and how they came back and uh, we've spoken about the reasons why what this happened why this happened and uh, this was uh, the fifth year after Risala. the fifth year after Risala, they came back they stayed for three or four months uh, and then uh, and then a year later, or more, more or less, they went for the second hijrah. But before the second hijrah, something happened that uh, it pushed uh, the Muslims to, to find a way out. So, um, so when they came back uh, from from the hijrah, the non-Muslims, the Quraysh, they were they're always in this impasse. They have to find a way. They, are, they don't know what to do. This thing is growing. This, this reality of Islam is growing. This Prophet of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is growing. So this distress is really on the Quraysh. It's them. They are the ones who, who, who are getting this distress. So they get together. So now the entire Quraysh is going to break into two. Quraysh of Quraysh. And then the rest would have the lineage to Abdul Manaf, which is the lineage to Sayyidina Ismail Sayyidina Ibrahim So we have, uh, we go up to Abdul Manaf. <coughs> so we speak about, uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, the forefathers of Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib, uh, Hashim, and finally Abdul Manaf. And they, so they, they come together and they say, um, uh, So they, they want to get together and they find a way to get Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Muhammad. They want to get him. Okay, they're talking to Abdul Manaf. Give us Muhammad. Mm-hmm. Get us endless. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So uh, they, w- they go to Abu Talib. What's the idea? The idea, the, the, the strategy here is to go to Abu Talib because he's under the, the, the protection of Abu Talib. Radiallahu uh, anhu. And they tell him, listen, we will give you the most charming and the most beautiful of our youth, and you take me, and you do with him, you know, you, you treat him well, and, and give us Muhammad. You give us Muhammad. And he tells him, Ajaban lakum. You guys are crazy. <laughs> you are going to give me your son, and I will treat him and feed him, and you want to take my son, and you want to kill him? Is this what you want to do? Is this, is this logical? أعطيكم ابني تقتلونه so when they, you know, they keep thinking, this is not going to happen. So the next strategy is, they are saying, أَجْمَعُوا أَمْرَهُمْ عَلَى مُنَابَذَةِ بَنِي هَاشِمْ And al-munabadha is وَبَنِي عَبْدُ الْمُطَّالِبُ وَرَجَى عَبْدُ الْمُنَافِ وَهَاشِمْ So now we, are, we want to do another attack, another strategy to, to uh, get these people of Banu Hashim outside. إِخْرَاجِهِمْ مِنْ مَكَّةِ and to make him feel, make them feel uh, strange. We want to, we want to pressure them, and uh, until they give us back, until they give us, يسلموا, until they give us Muhammad ليقتل, للقتل. Give us Muhammad and we will kill him. So we're gonna uh, estrange them. We're gonna push them. We're gonna pressure them. And if they don't want to leave, they're gonna have to give us back. They give us Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we're gonna kill. So they got together and they did something uh, which they have called uh, in, uh, in their own words uh, this munabata that, that, that I mentioned earlier is really a fact. It's like a business transaction. It's like a, a vow. So they get together between themselves and they say, listen, we're going we're gonna to write a pact okay, and we're going to uh, we, 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 you know, hang it on in, inside of the Kaaba. That, that would happen, right? 
في جوف الكعبة وضعوها في جوف الكعبة فنحازوا بنو هاشم and this fact is that we will uh, stop dealing with you selling you buying from you uh, and you're going to be what's that called? Sanction. 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 Sanction.
the people and from the, with them was uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. So Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was with them with his cousins. Of course, his cousins were the Al-Ash'ari, Al-Ash'ariyun. Al-Ash'ariyun, the Yemenis. The Yemenis were there and they all faced, they went to uh, to uh, Al-Habasha. <coughs> So when Quraysh saw this is happening, they want to still want to stifle the, this, this operation, and they sent who? Amr ibn al-As and Imara ibn al-Walid. Amr ibn al-As and Imara ibn al-Walid. Did Amr ibn al-As become Muslim? Later. Later. Uh, so he he wants to uh, to go and and meet with uh, al-Najashi and uh, tempt him or convince them to return him, to return him with us. This is, this is, they're, they're from us, you don't know what they're, they're, what they're thinking, uh, so we'll see later, inshallah, if we can, from uh, the seerah of the Imam of Dahlan, the conversation that he had with, uh, with the Najashi. Was he the, the second one? Apparently the second one, it may be. It may be. Wallah. The first time they went and they came back, so there was an interruption. It was three months, the first one was three months. It was a very short one. So he went. He went to Al Najashi. He, he meets with him. Uh, he brings him a lot of presents. Uh, he before he enters to the you know to his palace with his sujood and uh, all these details. And, and then he sits one from his right, one from the left, and they, they start uh, you know telling him about these people who have come to him. Who are they? And before they even reach out to them, the big people around Al Najashi they say to Al Najashi. Listen, uh, I think we should just uh, send them with with, uh, with with them because uh, they were probably given some bribes <laughs> before they, they went into a Najashi and so on. So, uh, any case, so a lot of there's a lot of conversation that happened. By the way, just to give you a, a side story, uh, there are, there are, there are a few Habasha uh, uh, Ethiopians who live in Barahiva who are not Muslim. So about three, four years ago, I was going back home on the bus. And this old man was looking at me and smiling. <laughs> so smart, these guys are smart. <laughs> and he told me, where are you from? You're Muslim? Yes. He said, I'm a Habashi, and I am Christian. And we're the ones who welcomed your prophet. I said, wallahi, you're right. I almost kissed his hand. <laughs> wallahi, I almost kissed his hand. <laughs> Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was smiling and proud like this. Jazakallah khair, wallahi. What can I say? So these are the <laughs> these people are, are those people who invited and, and welcomed the companions of the Prophet So now what happened um, back home in while they were uh, besieged, while they, they were besieged in um, in Shab uh, uh, Talib. Um, the people themselves, the Qurayshis themselves, the the, 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 the kuffar, the mushrikeen, they themselves did not like what Abu Lahab and the rest were doing. This is not fair. Look, these are our brothers. We don't care what, you know. And they say, so five of them came together, and I'm going to mention the name. Uh, Hisham uh, ibn Amr ibn al-Harith al-Amri. The other one is Zuhair ibn Abi Umayyah al-Mahzumi, who is... Uh, Related to the Prophet and the Pharisee, and Mutaim ibn Uday, and Nawfal, and then Abu al Bakhtari ibn Hisham, the Asadi, and Zum'a ibn al Asadi. So they got together at night, one night, five of them, they got together and they said, Listen, we have to put this to an end. They, they, they prepared like a, a drama. So the next morning, uh, who was it? Zuhair. He, he, he put on a beautiful, uh, he put a beautiful, uh, you know, fulla over his back, and he went to do tawaf. And when he was done with the tawaf, he faced everyone. Everyone was always busy in uh, in the Kaaba, the house of Allah. It was like the Mubarak. I mean, the house of Allah is always busy and uh, always attended. So he stood there, and he told him, "Ya ahla Mecca, we eat and we dress, and these people." I've been for there for three years. They don't eat and they don't, they don't change their clothes. So he says, he he tells them, 
لا يبيعون ولا يبتعون. We have uh, prohibit them or we have deprived them for buying and selling. I will not leave from here. I'm not going to sit down until we remove that vow that we have in the house of Rasulullah. And we rip it. We want to rip it. And Abu Jahl, why is Abu Jahl mentioned in the Quran? Except that is Sorry, this is Abu Jahl. Sorry. Is it, is it Abu Lahab or Abu Jahl? Abu Lahab. Why is Abu Lahab mentioned in, in, in the Quran? Because he was the first one to stifle Rasulullah when he got on a platform that Allah told him to. And everyone listening very attentively. And he says, Is this why you call us here? Is this why you call? So, subhanAllah, everyone was ready to, to accept, and you come and you stifle. So, Allah gave him a severe you know, uh, punishment. Uh, so, uh, Abu Lahab, uh, he, he stands up and he says, He tells him, Kazabta. You know, in Arabic, Kazabta, you lie. Uh, or you're you're not saying right, or you you made a mistake. you're wrong. For uh, Zama tells him, yeah, yeah, yeah. He tells him, Anta wallahi akzab. You are even more wrong. Anta akzab. And then he tells him, we were never happy with what what you have written, with what's hanging from from inside of the house of Allah. We were never agreeing with it. So he says this, and Abu al-Bakhtari. One of the five comes up and he stands up and he says the same thing. Sadaqta, Juma. And then Al Mut'a ibn Adayn, he says the same thing. He stands up, he says, You're right and you're wrong. Kadabta. He speaks Abu, <laughs> Abu Lahab. Kadaba. And then the, the fourth one stands up and the fifth one stands up and they all. Um, so it sounds like the revolution now is general. Everyone is disagreeing with uh, Abu Lahab and the decision of Quraysh uh, three years ago. So he goes into uh, he goes into uh, the, the Kaaba, and he, what happened to the? It was eaten by termites. Who was it? The termites. Termites. Yes, yes. Termites. And what was left in it? Bismillahumma. Bismillahumma. The name of Allah Subhanahu. Bismillahumma. A direct, in you know. Uh, Communication with Allah, Bismillahumma, Subhanaka. Ismullah. So the name of Allah was left in that everything. So they saw that they couldn't. They were always facing these, these miracles with Rasulullah. They were facing these miracles time and time and time again. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this, was, this happened and uh, they were all uh, freed by, from this. Uh, Subhanallah, Allah made it easy for them to, to be uh, relieved from this, this siege. The funny thing is, the interesting thing is that, again, if we go into the details, especially from the history of Imam al Tahlan, is that Rasulullah knew about this and he informed Abu Talib. Rasulullah, so Abu Talib, how could Abu Abdullah be a Muslim? Abu Talib was, was a believer. Abu Talib saw these things all day long. The miracles of the Prophet were in front of his eyes at every minute. And uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remember how uh, I said last week that uh, Ruqayya made dua against those people and they died, right? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could have made a dua against all of them. End of story, right? But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he came as a mercy to mankind and he wanted to do things in a way which is by cause and effect and show us how we trust Allah and we go and do things. I said. So now this this happens, and, and they don't need to have they don't need to have any, any TV or internet or social media. These news this news travels really fast. The people of Najran hear about this. The Christians of Najran, and where is Najran? South of Mecca, a little bit to the west, at the borders of Yemen. So they hear about. <coughs> That Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the people of uh, the Muslims in Mecca, are now free to talk and communicate outside their little world. They sent a delegation. They sent twenty people, twenty men, okay, uh, or more or less, and they go to 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 them and they speak to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he recites them some 
some uh, verses. I, I, I unfortunately I don't have the uh, these, these verses, but it immediately accept Islam because this is exactly what's in their in their Bible. These are Christians. These Christians they they know, and Abu Jahl again he says you you are out of your mind. You were sent as a delegation from your people, and before you go back, you you fall in his trap. You know. He says, Salamu alaykum la bi jahidikum. He says, Salam alaykum, all of you, not your, your Abu Jah. Okay? I say salam to all of you except you. Lakum ma antum alayhi wa lana ma akhtarnahu. You are, do what you want and we take what we put to. Uh, Subhanallah. In Mecca. In Mecca, of course. Okay? One thing, you know, the thing that one of the, they used to, the, they used to get some camel and used to push it to there. But who is the nice kafir? Kafir who did a lot of help to the Muslim side. One of the, well, among the five, his father was very helping the Prophet. Ah, uh, yes, I, I don't know. The, uh, Go ahead. No, yeah. Among the five, uh, Abu is fan of something. The third person that spoke, his father, okay. was helping Prophet. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 no, he did not. No. Oh, Maybe yes. uh, al Mutam ibn Adi, Mutam, yeah, Mutam ibn Mutam ibn Adi. his son is uh, Jubair ibn Al-Tam, he became Muslim. He became Muslim. Uh, but the father, al Mutam ibn Adi, I think he was so, Kareem. Yes. But yeah. I don't think he... But he, uh, you know, he, he took that, he used to load yeah. the camel up, and then he used to push the camel. Allah. And like he used to smuggle food, even though he wasn't a Muslim. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And that during the time of Prophet, Battle of Badr, Prophet wasallam said, Do you have Mutam ibn Adi? He said, if he was there, I would have I would free, uh, free all those things. Allah, Allah. Yeah. And Mutam ibn Adi did multiple things. He kind of like, even when Prophet came from the side, he's the one that gave him the security, the aman. Ah, you are, you are. So you are. this, this, yes. he's a, yeah. Subhanallah, he's a, you see? There is a lot of noble men amongst the kafir. That, absolutely, that we, absolutely. We should not forget. There was only one that left to it. Only and one, which was mentioned by you in the Quran. Only one, mm. Abu Lahab. Yes. That was hopeless. And he was a relative, most close to Prophet yeah. La ilaha illallah. Because all, for all of them, there was some hope that tomorrow maybe this person or his son. Yes, or yes. Son uh, this one is finished. But this, you know, once mentioned in Quran. Done. If you, Allah knows that he's. Yes. No, you know, if you would have become Muslim, you would have discredited the whole Quran. Exactly. Yeah. It's ajib. <laughs> even by, even <laughs> as a hypocrite. As a hypocrite. Even. Yeah. <laughs> Subhanallah. So these things happened, and all, as these things happen, Allah reveals these verses. And one of the verses that Allah revealed uh, in Surah Al-Qasas, in English, as for those faithful to whom we had given the scripture before the Quran, they do believe in it, and it is recited to them. Okay, This is definitely the truth from our Lord. We had already submitted uh, this before. Uh, and we are giving reward to those who are in, persevering and so on. So this, this verse was revealed uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this occasion. About the Najran, right? About the Najran. Basically, there are two delegations from Najran. This is the first one. Second one came in Medina. And the fact is mentioned in all of Najran. So Jazakallah. Yes. MashaAllah. Jazakallah. So, um, so what happens now? They are free. People from Najran come, they become Muslim, and people of Quraysh are going crazy. <laughs> this is this is not right. We have to do something. So they, they did what they used to do from before, which is like they're desperate. They're being desperate. They, they, they go back and they they keep accusing him of, of magic, of sorcery, of lying. Of, of becoming insane, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa hasha, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah again reveals and He speaks to them uh, in these verses. So, anyway, we, we'll stick there and, and maybe next week we will go back and, and go through these things in a little bit more detail from the, the seerah of Imam al -Bahad. In these days, that is very shortly after this, passes away who? Say Abu Talib as well, but we are speaking about inshallah about, about Khadija radiallahu anha, which is slightly after this uh, the, the siege of, uh, of Abu Talib. Did you get malnourished and all that? I guess they were going through a lot of hardship. Yeah, maybe. So, the, so, so can I share one incident? Please. So 
so they are so desperate one time one of the sahaba he goes out to exercise they were eating so much leaves their excrement was becoming that of a goat imagine we are eating so much vegetation and then there was no vegetation left to come in. and one time one of the sahaba he goes to relieve himself and while relieving himself he hears a sound cut cut like some sound and then he kind of find that it was a leather you know the animal hide that was discarded yes. and they kind of like clean that hide and everybody says that is a tally la ilaha illallah that's how much desperate they were yeah. for of three course. years oh yeah yeah and like the I mean like the Khadija and especially Khadija as an evangelist she used to be like very rich and used to live a pompous life and living in this kind of desperate poverty how did she was not under the environment she chose to stay with her and many yes. others have of course her she was the first to have chosen to be with her husband and she was always uh, selfless and unconditional with her help to Sayyidina Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam for both uh, being the prophet of Allah and being her husband Uh, her love was uh, unequal, uh, radiyallahu anha. And for that reason, when she passed away, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would mention her by name very often. We find this in the seerah and the hadith, radiyallahu anha. And he would uh, uh, always make dua for her, yutarahamu alayha. Uh, <coughs> and she was, uh, she was the, the very beautiful uh, soul. She was the pure soul. She was the... She was the pivot of, of, of uh, Quraysh in her time. She was smart, intelligent, rich, uh, beautiful, popular, successful. Everyone was running. But when she married Sayyidina Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he became the pivot of the pivot. So she forgot herself. herself. She, was her, she was his servant. Khadija radiallahu anha had become the servant of, of Sayyidina Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we were to to speak about her, I mean, it would, uh, you know, it would hurt, her, hurt us because of what she meant to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, more than anything. And she was beautiful, radiallahu anha, she's the mother of the Bidu, she's our mother, radiallahu anha. Uh, a lot of stories about her. And because also, uh, she was the mother of all his children, except uh, for uh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim. Ibrahim uh, radiallahu anhu. Her first uh, daughter was Zainab, mm. correct? She's the oldest one. And uh, she was married to? Abu Al-Aas. Abu Al-Aas, he's a cousin, right? She's, he's the cousin of sisters, no, sisters. Nephew of Khadija. So Abu Al-Aas, Abu Al-Aas ibn Rabia is the son of Hala, the, the sister of Khadija. Bint Khawailid. And she was the cause. Khadija radiallahu anha is the one who asked Rasulullah to marry them. And he would never refuse her any any of the uh, her requests. So from uh, Zainab and Abu al-As came Umama. Umama radiallahu anha uh, after Fatima radiallahu anha passed away Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu married Umama. Okay. And it was a request of Fatima Radiallahu Allah. Allah. It was she, she, she recommended. Allah Allah. <coughs> so, I mean, this is like the Ahlul Bayt. This is the, the, the very special uh, people of Ahlul Bayt. Radiallahu Anhu. So, uh, Umama uh, married, uh, married Sayyidina Ali Radiallahu Anhu. And then there was also uh, uh, Ruqayya. Obviously, the wife of Sayyidina Uthman. And we've seen last week how beautiful she was. There were poems written about her and Sayyidina Uthman. They were extremely beautiful. And uh, after she passes away, so this, so, so, so uh, Zainab gets married to Abu al-As before the prophecy, before a risala okay? And Uthman, of course, uh, after the risala with uh, Ruqayya, and then she passes away after the hijrah. And then he gets married with Umm Kulthum. And he is Dun Nurain, of course. They, they had a son named Abdullah. Okay. Which, which, which daughter? I don't know. I don't know. But they had a son who became, who passed away when he was a prophet. He was a prophet. Maybe it was uh, the Usman Radana. Usman Radana. That would be an Ahl al Bayt. Imagine that child grew up 
his name was Abdul, and he, he died yeah. from an animal bite or something? Probably Umm Kulthum, Allahu Akbar. Umm Kulthum, they had a son. I, w- I just want to bring us bring to our attention that uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so special and, and filled with light that uh, both of them were, you know, if you were lucky to marry two of the Prophet's daughters, you are worthy of being called the Noor. It's so amazing that he was able to, you know, Allah have granted him that. Um, so, and then Fatima, of course, radiallahu anha, she was the youngest of, uh, of her daughters, and she passed away after the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who else was it? Uh, Fatima. Uh, and, uh, and, her, and then there were others who were younger, who were younger and who passed away before uh, when they were young, who, who were who were there? Al Qasim. Al Qasim. There were three boys. Ibrahim. Three boys. Yeah. Ibrahim was the. Ibrahim was Marakatia. from Maria. Marakatia. That's yeah. with. Uh, we're the, talking about Khadija. Yeah. Qasim and uh, Abdullah. 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 He was known as well as Al Tayyib. Al Tayyib. Who's older? Who's older? Qasim or the Qasim? Yeah, Al Qasim. Al Qasim. And then Abdullah, who was known as. Tayyib or Tayyib, mm-hmm. and also uh, Al Tahir or uh, Abdullah was both names. Yeah, was uh, Abdullah has two opinions. Two names. Two yeah. names. So, so Tahir. exactly. Yeah. Al Tayyib was Tahir. Yeah. Some people think that it's more, that all of them are different, but the, 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 the profound understanding is that Abdullah. Tayyib and Prophet used to call Tahir or Exactly. I just wanted to say if there's something else uh, about one of the uh, with with Zainab. Zainab, so so Zainab, uh, if you recall, she was married with uh, Abu Al-Asan. He was not a Muslim for a long time. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And they were separate until la- much later when the Hijrah happened. And the beautiful story we'll go we'll go back and re- revisit this inshallah when we reach there. But uh, it was beautiful how she loved her husband and he loved her. So they were in in, in Medina, and the uh, the, the Muslims were intercepting the delegations. Okay? These skirmishes were not to wage war. It was to weaken their enemy who were always you know, attacking them. So they, they were 700 camels. And Abu al-As was the, the chief of that uh, delegation. At night, so this happened at night, they took the camels and they couldn't find Abu al-As. So Abu al-As came, or it happened during the day, but in that night, he came to see his wife. He entered Medina and he, he sees Zainab. So Zainab is very happy to meet her husband. And in the morning, uh, so she takes him as a jiwa to protect him. So she opens uh, the door of the Rawdah when the Prophet does Allahu Akbar, so no one can move. So he says, Ana Zainab, <laughs> bint Muhammad, wa inni ajartu, wa in. So you should protect him. So the Prophet ﷺ finishes the salah and he turns towards him and he says, Did you hear what I heard? <laughs> Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Well, you know, we are going to uh, respect this jiwa. And in the same sitting, he tells, Because he is the chief of this caravan, you know, the, this caravan was already distributed. But he tells him, Listen, because he's our guest now, any of you who will admit to give his you know, uh, thing back, then do it. And, and everyone did what the Prophet would. They returned everything to Wa'i. SubhanAllah. Anyway, so and we'll, we'll go through this in detail when, when we come back again. We'll stop here, inshallah. So it was a very romantic couple. Yes. And the thinking very, is that uh, we don't talk about this incident. Like It's very interesting. Very beautiful. And he became Muslim very late. Yeah. Very much. I'll stop here and then and then we can continue. Salah talking. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala sayyidina wa nabiyina wa